All right, time now is 6.32 a.m. on June 3rd. Day seven of shooting, guys. I'm using my right hand right now. It looks a little weird, but yes, indeed. I slept from 2.30 to 6.20, uh, so it's a little bit less than four hours. Kind of terrible. But at least it's not as bad as yesterday morning. Um, my hand is still hurt as hell. Uh, so is my toe. And um, yeah, this is going to hurt for about a week. Um, so there's that. Um, yeah. So, um, day seven, we're going to Torrance today. There's going to be a house, so hopefully there's going to be a spot where I can just sit down and sleep or something. I don't know. Um, but, um, yeah, there's nothing to really expect today. I'm going to continue to ignore Leslie. I feel like that's the thing to do right now, really. Um, I saw with Michelle last night, and Michelle's really opposed to the idea of me being with Leslie. I still have a little bit of hope, but honestly, it's not big. It's not great. Um, I hate that even after the confession. It's like... It's like the confession didn't even happen. Like, it's still a guessing game or something, you know? It's still, ooh, would I, do I have hope? Do I not have hope? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Confession really didn't mean anything. Um, oh, God damn it. Um, yeah. And hopefully I go to bed by like 1 a.m. or even earlier tonight. Because I am extremely, extremely sleepy and I am hurting myself extremely much so by sleeping so little. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a couple things to mention about a couple days ago and yesterday. Uh, but I low-key forgot. A couple days ago when I was filming with the... Or actually three days ago when I was filming with the Japanese people with Aoba. Um, we we're just talking about like languages. And the Chinese woman wanted me to say he's stupid in Mandarin to the Japanese Brazilian guy. And I was a little embarrassed by it because I'm terrible at Mandarin. Um, so instead, um, he, she asked me to say, like, fuck your mom in Cantonese, the classic, the classic swear word. So I did that. And then she asked me, can I say it speaking Mandarin? And I said, yes, Liang. And that is like more Taiwanese way of saying it. Uh, Tani Ma is the more Chinese way of saying it. And then, um, that Japanese Brazilian guy said ni da bian, which means you shit. And I, and then the Chinese woman said, oh, it's, we don't say it like that. And then I said, anta wa unko. And then they're impressed that I can speak it and say that in Japanese. Okay, yeah, that's a small thing. I'm so tired. Oh my God. And I hope this shit heals ASAP. A little cold outside, a little raining outside. Then like a drink, I don't know, we're watch out. Big difference, but like, yeah.
No, the grip's in the grip cave. Because we were on one. So I got some eggs beat up. Right? Right here I got chicken broth. Ooh. Let's pour in, I don't know, one to one ratio. I think that's one to one. Okay, maybe a little too thin, but I think we're good. And then I am going to add a bunch of these green onions, which are not fresh at all, but who cares? And then we'll mix them up, add a couple more, we'll mix them up, and then we're going to add some salt and pepper. Oh, actually, just salt. There we go. Okay, let's try this out. It's dinner time. This is steamed egg. Uh, attempt number two, I guess. Hold on. Yeah, it's still a little, still kind of disappointing. It's just not enough flavor, and uh, it's not the consistency that I was looking for. All right, so time now is uh, <clears throat> twelve forty-seven after midnight. Hold on, I gotta drink some water. As you can probably tell, uh. I am in my street clothes right now because I recently came back home about a couple hours ago, immediately cooked myself dinner, and right now I'm so fucking tired. I'm gonna, after this, I'm gonna immediately take a shower and go to bed. I don't, I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm not, I'm literally not gonna do anything else. So I'm just gonna do this, talk about today, go to bed, that's it. So again, today, uh, <coughs> I slept a little more than yesterday. And that literally means nothing because today I slept for about three hours and 50 minutes. So today and yesterday combined, it's basically uh, less than six hours. So, um, oh my God, I just received a bunch of photos of myself. That's wild. <coughs> um, <coughs> yeah, also, okay, anyways, I'm really tired and it's honestly a miracle that I'm still alive and I'm still functioning today uh, because I, uh, I really uh, wouldn't be normally. Uh, but this is not a normal circumstance. So, uh, so today I arrived at CMD. Um, call time is uh, 8 a.m. And I arrived at CMD at around 7.20. And I thought I would be late because usually we go to CMD about an hour earlier. Um, but turns out I'm quite early because the only person there was like Yulia and Miguel and Anna and, uh, you know, we're once again loading a bunch of stuff into the trucks. So I helped, even though with my injured finger, I really don't want to help, but you know what? Screw it. I helped anyways. I helped move the apple boxes and the pancakes and the quarters, and then I helped, um, move a couple other stuff i don't know i just i just moved a bunch of stuff um but um yeah yeah essentially uh i just realized i need to do a couple things but uh i essentially helped out moving some stuff i stacked a apple box tower it's pretty fun and then Birkin drove Liana, me, 
Let me think. Did Bergen join you there? I think he did. I'm getting all mixed up. So I... Huh. I'm getting so mixed up right now. How did I get to Torrance? How the hell did I get there? Uh, I think it was Birkin who drove me there. Oh yeah, it was Birkin who drove me there. Nick was there, Julio was there, and Liana was there. Yes. And in the middle of the road, in a big road, Birkin straight up left the car, opened the car door, left the car, went to the trunk, grabbed the jacket, and then jumped back in the car. He's basically fucking insane. And it all happened within 20 minutes, and it happened so fast I couldn't pull out my phone or my, uh, my camera in time to film it. Uh, but it's pretty fucking insane. So we arrived at Torrance, and uh, it was like 8.15 or something, and I immediately continued to help out, move some props and whatever. And again, I, I, I basically after yesterday, I vowed to never like help move shit anymore, but of course I cannot uphold that. Every time I see people moving stuff and carrying stuff, I feel bad if I don't do the same, so I did the same. Uh, so that is that. Um... Uh, we settled down and uh, I whipped out my camera and then uh, the shoot begins. So the first half of the day from 9 p.m. to like 1.30 p.m. We have the bedroom scene that's supposed to take place at night. Finally, they found out that day for night is a thing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a scene where the main character goes, uh, does a video Zoom call with her daughter and her daughter uh is funny because a bunch of the pas uh basically every peep every person in this film 32 aside from ariel and ethan s uh are actually at cmd during that time setting up for uh a camera c which is actually uh the freaking zoom meeting which is so funny um so everyone ranging from Jordan to Aaliyah to Gregory to Sean are all at CMD right now or at that point. Um, and I came up with this pretty awesome idea of me and Tova simultaneously filming BTS at the same time when they were do doing a take. And I guess Tova didn't really understand what I mean by that. So Tova filmed a bunch of BTS and I filmed a bunch of BTS and I called her like three, four times to make sure we filmed the same take at the same time so that in the documentary we can do a split screen. Um, but at the end we fucking failed. At some point she was like, oh, I ran out of space in my SD card. So she spent about half an hour exporting all her stuff in the SD card and then coming back. And then uh, I told her, wait, hold on. Uh, and then I got to sneak into the room, into the bedroom, where I could film the BTS. And at that point, Tova didn't pick up my calls. Uh, he didn't receive my text. I texted Jordan and Gibson and about it. Uh, but yeah, we ended up not being able to get that. But it's totally fine. It's just a stupid, fun little idea. Doesn't really matter all that much. Um, so anyways, that's that. Also, um, in the... In the morning of the day, I I either had nothing good to do or I just filmed a lot of BTS and that's it. And again, with me and Leslie, we're in this really awkward situation. Yesterday, I can't believe church was yesterday. It felt like a whole week ago, honestly, because so much just happened. But after yesterday, it's like half and half ambivalent. At, to a degree, I think Leslie changed her mind and I probably did some things that really turned myself off really turned her off and then to some degree i feel like maybe we still have a chance maybe leslie's just playing hard to get i really don't know and then today more weird things continue to happen so gustavo and anna are abandoned for most of the time and they were just sitting at the side of the backyard just waiting because their camera beat and they have nothing to do so uh, they felt really bad and Anna had her complaints and, uh, we, we, I and Anna, we spoke to Gustavo. No, mainly I spoke to Gustavo. 
Um, and Gustavo started talking about Leslie and how she's being abusive and toxic and blah, 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 blah. Which is also interesting because I agree with Gustavo. Like, I can relate to him because Leslie's also being really toxic and abusive to me. But also, at the same time, I find it really funny because I'm in love with her. And also... Leslie's abusiveness towards me is a little different from her usual abusiveness. I feel like I get almost special treatment. Like she abuses me in a, in a different way. Not even abuse. She treats me like shit in a different way. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty weird. Um, but there are multiple things going on at the same time. Benny told me that Zach may hate him. Turns out that's not true. Benny and Zach had a private moment where Zach talked about the art department people. And, I, and Zach saw me and Zach was like, you know, just give us a private moment. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, I'm just going to ask Benny and Benny will tell me. See, right now I can handle Benny because I have shared such personal information with Benny and Benny has shared somewhat of a personal information with me. So now I have leverage against him. He has leverage against me, which deepened our friendship in a way. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So um, when I and Gustavo were talking about Leslie... Leslie showed up behind us, far behind us. Um, and then I saw Benny. And then Benny just walked up to Leslie. No, no, Leslie went up to Benny. Leslie was Benny. And Leslie went up to Benny. And they started talking. And I just stared at them. And, and I saw both of them saw me. And Benny was like... <laughs> and I just didn't know how to react. I'm like, okay. Honestly, at that point, I, I really don't care what leslie is saying to benny i don't want to care i do want to know but i will try my best not want to know okay this is getting really fucking annoying <sighs> okay uh so essentially there is that and then a little bit later i went up to benny and i just you know, it doesn't really matter that much because some one way or another, I will find out what Leslie said. Like, I know everything. I got eyes and ears everywhere. It's like, I can literally, like, if there are any secrets, boop, I'll just find it. So, um, yeah, I spoke with Benny immediately after that. And Benny told me something extremely interesting. And that is, uh, apparently, Leslie went up to Benny and asked, should I talk to Enoch? Which is really weird. And Benny's like, what? I don't know. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? And Leslie's like, a good thing. And this is according to Benny. So I don't know how real this conversation is. At first, I thought Benny's kidding. I could not fathom the idea that Leslie thinks about me and wants to speak to me. Because I thought Leslie doesn't give a shit about me. When I sliced my finger off yesterday, Leslie just did not care. When Michelle was like, hey, don't go kill yourself, Leslie just did not care. He never gave a shit about me. Why would she suddenly do that? I don't know, but it's really weird. And I and Benny continued to have a secret conversation in the back of the backyard. Um, in the back, 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 backyard. And we talked about the mole, and I talked about how I'm slowly beginning to know who the mole is. I think it's Ava and Trinity. Or Jaden. And A, Thomas is really oddly suspicious, but I, don't, but I don't think Thomas is the one who did it. But Thomas is suspicious because Thomas knows it's Ava, Trinity, and Jaden. Because they're actually tight. And Liam never told me the truth. And Liam also seldom talked about who the mole is. Because even though he's a huge conspiracy guy, he's a huge paranoia conspiracy guy but he didn't talk about who the mole is why because he does, he wants to hide it so the most likely suspect right now is literally ava trinity Jaden, and probably liam as well so uh that's the plan uh, that's my hypothesis at that point leslie took a peek at us and smiled awkwardly and walked away and and Benny's like, Leslie, come here, come here, come here. So Leslie came here and I immediately fucking walked away. And Benny's like, come on, Enoch, come on. This is UPM business. I mean, as a UPM command you to come back. And I'm like, no, no. And I immediately like zoomed off. 
Uh, <laughs> at some point earlier, Leslie and Gustavo and Jonathan had a talk together, like a secret talk, and I secretly filmed some of it. Uh, because Leslie and Gustavo are really, really beefing. So yeah, really interesting. Um, so all of that happened, uh, but otherwise it's really chill. And then we have lunch, which is very interesting. Uh, me, Gustavo, Theo, Anna, a bunch of other people, Nick, uh, sat together and have lunch in at the very side. I had to sit on top of a camera box to have lunch. We have gone from sitting on normal chairs to sit, sitting on Apple boxes to sitting on a camera box. I personally sat on a T2.0 anamorphic lens. I thought we're not using anamorphic lens though. Don't know why the hell that box is there. But uh, yeah, the lunch is this pretty underwhelming dry pasta thing. Uh, but it's not that bad. Um, but while having lunch, uh, things started to get increasingly fascinating. Oh, first of all, very early in the morning, I saw Red with the bandana, but Red was wearing a hat. And I just thought, ooh, I actually wanted to wear a bandana myself. So Red gave me her his red bandana. So throughout the entire day today, I wore Red's bandana. And people were like, little, ooh, what's this new piece of clothing? Like first with the with the rope necklace, second of all, uh, with this bandana. It's just, I keep surprising people. Uh, Leslie, in fact, at some point asked me, what's with the red string? What's with the red thing? You know, and I'm like, I don't want to answer her. So I just said, I don't know, fashion. And she's like, that's not an answer. And then it, she walked away or something. <laughs> I don't want to answer you, bitch. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's that. And then people, during lunchtime, people start to talk about me. Um, at some point, uh, I just hear people talk about me and Gustavo mentioning that I like weird stuff. I seem like a kind of person who would like weird stuff. Um, and he meant it in a good way. He meant it in a way it's like I'm a quirky person because I got the noose around my neck and, uh, and uh, you know, I got the red bandana. It's just like I seem like a, the kind of person who enjoys weird stuff. Uh, so that's pretty okay. And then Theo talked about me as well. And then I also overheard Theo talking about how he's capable of being a killer. And he said in a half-joking way. But also today Theo was upset like most of the time. And he said he could grab a pencil and stab someone really fast. It's, I don't, you know, boys conversations. Um, and then um, Leslie showed up out of nowhere and almost argued with Anna because apparently there's a confusion between the college's tripod spreader versus a Keslo tripod uh, spreader. And it's just kind of confusing. And then there's baby sticks or whatever. And baby sticks and whatever. And it's uh, sort of confusing. I tried to help Leslie out. So I'm a little less mad at Leslie. But, you know, still. Okay, anyways. After lunch... Um, I, Ariel, and Benny had a really long conversation at the secret hidden car park, parking lot, parking spot uh, behind the house where they had a vape break. And I suddenly had this ingenious idea. So Ariel already knows that I'm into Leslie because Benny told her. And then, uh, so it's really awkward, but it's okay because I, I trust Ariel a bit more. Um... And then we had a pretty long talk and I suddenly had this amazing idea of prepping Ariel so that she can dethrone Betsy and David when she enters film 33. So I started talking about the people who are going to end up in her film 33. And I started talking about, you know, how to play the game. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize, holy shit, I'm actually like a, I'm actually really good at this. Like I'm good at planning against people, plotting, scheming, calculating, and this is like my forte. And I kept on talking to Ariel in, in a way it's like, oh, you know, it's like a game. It's like a chess, it's like 3D chess. And Ariel got really excited and she was really into it. And it was a lot of fun. And then we talked about uh, Leslie again. And Benny was like, oh, you got to go to a sex toy shop and like buy some ropes and whatever and do BDSM. And I'm like, bro, it's not like that. Um, but at some point I talked about Leslie and Ariel told me 
that yesterday, Leslie told Ariel that I confessed to her. So Leslie straight up leaked my confession to Ariel. What the fuck? Again, I'm glad that it's Ariel, low-key, because Ariel is also someone that I can handle. I'm glad it's not like Zach or something. Like, come on. Uh, but what the fuck? And I, and I was a little upset that Leslie would do that. But Ariel said it's a good thing because it means Leslie is constantly thinking about my confession to her. Um, which is actually a pretty fucking great thing in my opinion. Like, um, and that really made me start to rethink, okay, maybe Leslie doesn't like, didn't like change her mind. Maybe Leslie just has a hard time trying to express her own feelings for me, uh, which I still don't believe exists. Um, but it's really interesting. And then after Leslie told Ariel about my confession, um, Ariel asked Leslie, so what are you going to do? And Leslie's like, she smiled and shrugged. Oh, what the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? It's really, what? And then again, I look at myself and I see a skinny, idiotic person with acne on my face. It's like, how do you like a person like this? It's so like, come on. Oh, by the way, Leslie's hairdo today, a lot better. She had bangs. And honestly, it's kind of hot. Um, but then at some point, she changed to doing clips again, like Cole Benny. I don't like that, please. Uh, but that's really interesting. And then a little bit later today, Benny told me that Benny and Leslie had a conversation again. And Leslie told Benny that she will date me, that she wants to date me, or at least she will date me, which is pretty fucking wild. I don't know how true this is, but that's pretty fucking wild. And then Benny said that he personally still thinks that Leslie's a lesbian. So Leslie will not, you know, be into me. But Leslie will date me, which is great enough. Um, and then at some point during the shoot in the bedroom scene in the morning, Leslie randomly walked up to Ariel and said, some people really think that I'm purely a lesbian, but that's not true. And then hugged Ariel and then walked away. It's so fucking obvious that she didn't say that to Ariel. She said that to me. But I know that she's not purely a lesbian. I think okay, my theory is that because for the last few days I've been ignoring Leslie, Leslie thinks that I'm not into her anymore because I think she's a pure lesbian. Because that's what Benny told me. But that's not true. I know for sure that she's bisexual. And she has had crushes on both guys and girls. And I know I definitely, probably, maybe have a chance. Um, but Leslie is so clear that Leslie said that to me. But she couldn't say to my face. Holy fuck. And I could see through it. Because I'm smart. You don't fuck with the detective. All right, I gotta go quick before storage space runs out. So, um, that's extremely interesting. And even so, that being said though, I will still keep ignoring Leslie just because I want her to know how it feels to have your emotions being played. And also I wanna show to her that she isn't the strong one. I mean, yeah, I like it if she plays aggressive and dominant and all that stuff. I like violent women, it's so fucking awesome, but don't keep abusing me as if I'm trash. I'm better than that. I can fight if I want and I will enjoy it. I want her to know that. So I'll keep ignoring her. Um, but uh, there are a couple moments where she tries to initiate something out of me. At the very end of the day at the wrap, I was clearly really tired. She saw me and I was sitting on the couch inside the house and she was like, Enoch, are you excited? Are you excited for uh, a new, uh, the tomorrow? Tomorrow's the last day. And I'm like, yeah. And, and she's like, yeah, tomorrow's the last day. Are you excited? And I'm like, it's not the last day. And she's like, what? Well, there will be a pickup. And I'm like, and that's pretty much it. And then uh, earlier I was texting Michelle about Leslie and then Leslie showed up and was like, hi. And before I could respond, she's already gone. 
but uh, that's that. And she also patted my head earlier in the morning, which is really nice. But at the same time, she's also like leaning against another person, putting her leg on Andrew's lap. Like, can't I have some exclusivity or some shit? Um, but then again, she's also an extrovert. So maybe that's how she treats like literally everyone and their moms. Um, anyways, after lunch, Cliff finally woke up. Apparently, Cliff was going to wake up early today, but she, he kept falling back asleep. So he ended up not going to CMB at all. And he ended up directly coming to Torrance right at the end of lunchtime. And then also, Tova came. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit. Um, and that's that. And that's pretty interesting. Again, we talked about... I talked about Leslie a little bit. Again, it's really crazy that I and Leslie are kind of almost a thing. And Benny also, like, almost refused to believe it. And Benny's also like, oh my god, there's so much drama, but there's also so much romance. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Liam is into Ava, and he in red with Ariel, and then me with Leslie. It's, like, kind of crazy. And also, again, like... Leslie's a hardcore, aggressive, psychotic girl. That's the youngest. She's only 18, and yet she treats everyone like shit. And I'm like the nicest person who's a little goofy, but clearly there's something going on with me. And clearly there's a deeper, darker side of me, but people don't really know it. And so me and Leslie's like, we match, but it's like such a crazy fucking combo. So I'm low-key proud. I'm low-key happy that more and more people are knowing about it, even though I also don't want that to happen. Um, so yeah, kind of interesting. I bet Leslie told Crystal as well. And when I saw Crystal last time, I acted like nothing's happening. I'm an actor, okay. Okay, but uh, yeah. And then we have this crazy dolly shot with the party and also um, the cards playing scene. Which is really boring. For the most part, I stayed in the room on the couch. And I spoke to Bree and Tova. Bree showed up a little later. But um, it was kind of chill. Tova told Dominic some time ago that I'm into JPEG Mafia. It's music. And Dominic was surprised. Dominic's like, what? Enoch's, Enoch likes JPEG Mafia? Like, he didn't expect it. Which is true. I'm like a little quiet Asian kid. Why would I listen to JPEG Mafia? But that's just how it is. You know, I'm just crazy like that. Another thing is, um, I said my favorite band is Radiohead, and Tova was like, oh yeah, Tyler's favorite band is also Radiohead, and I'm like, wow, we're similar in many ways, because we're both emo and sad as fuck. And then at the very end of today, I spoke with Tyler again, and Tyler basically said in middle school, he listened to Radiohead a lot, but now not anymore, because he has had sex. Um, and he said it in a half-joking way, but I'm sure he probably has had sex. <laughs> Um, but still, you know, I'm emo and sad as fuck. I just don't show it, but I sort of will. I low-key want to just wear earrings and wear lipsticks and whatever and just ruin my face, you know. That's, like, part of the plan. Um, yeah, um, so really interesting. And again, like, I told Tova how at some point Tyler told me to see a therapist after I showed Tyler my the first two lines of my poem that I wrote for Leslie, strangle me to death with your sweaty hands. If you don't love me, please kill me slowly. Stick me to a wall with your gaff tape and stab me with a C stand. And uh, and Tova's like, wow, if out of anyone, Tyler tells you to see a therapist, Tyler himself should see a therapist. So yeah, it's pretty wild. It's just... I'm in the ranks of some of the most insane, unhinged people. But also, it's just that, like, we're all just crazy. We're all just fucking crazy. At some point, Theo got really upset, so somebody needed to help put the Fisher dolly onto the tracks. And Theo was like, come on, you know, Eric, someone, come here. So I came here, and apparently we're missing the rollers, whatever that means. Um, and I, we couldn't do it. And then at some point... Uh, Ethan, who is like the nicest, most like straight up guy ever, grabs a can of Sprite um, and drinks it. And Red's like, don't, don't drink my prop, dude. Don't drink my prop, dude. And Ethan was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. And, and Red was like, okay, next time, don't drink my prop. And Red was stressed as fuck. Like he wasn't himself. 
I've never seen red like this before. It's kind of scary, actually. Uh, <coughs> Jonathan also shaved himself bald, by the way. Anna had a haircut yesterday as well. Like, like a few days ago, Anna had a haircut, and she looked different yesterday with shorter hair. A lot of people are getting character change haircuts. It's interesting because I will get one very soon. Um, and Brie also wants to dye her hair back to red from magenta. <coughs> but, um, yeah, that's that. And then, um, I, oh god, I'm so tired. Um, yeah, that scene went on and on and on and on and on. And again, I spent a lot of time thinking about Leslie, but honestly, I also spent a lot of time just joking around, taking BTS footage. Um, I'll see the writer showed up again. I had a mini conversation with him and I really showed off my film knowledge, you know. I talked about indie films and A24 and Scorsese. Uh, and then a little bit later, I secretly filmed Birkin and Alsi talking. And Birkin immediately noticed my camera and was like, this guy's such a creep. I couldn't hear what he's saying, but I bet that's what he said. Um, which is pretty cool. I like that people are beginning to see like, oh, this guy's kind of creep, actually. Um... <clears throat> well, yeah, it's pretty interesting. At the very end of the day, I was just extremely tired. I sat on the couch and I tried to like lay down. I immediately fell asleep. Immediately. And and then later, when I was when I and Nick and uh, Dominic took a lift back home, I also pretty much immediately fell asleep. It's so easy. I lay down on something, boom, sleep. Um. So I'm pretty sure later when I take a shower. And then I go to bed. I can basically immediately fall asleep. So that's that. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's uh, I don't know. I'll still continue uh, to ignore Leslie. Also, a small thing that I forgot to mention is yesterday. Uh, so I rage smashed the drying machine a couple nights ago. I was pretty upset, and partially it's just my dark blue underwear falling out of the uh, washing machine and I don't want to wash it again but I had to so I washed it again next morning they're using the drying machine they keep washing their clothes it's crazy and where the hell's my underwear then if it's not in the drying machine turns out they just flop it on the chair which means that I have to wash it again for the third fucking time but you know what it's okay it's totally okay. Um, so that was a little infuriating. And then, um, and also embarrassing because it's just one underwear. So they would probably think things, especially the Colombian boyfriend character. So at some point, the Colombian boyfriend, Michael and Candace, the white woman roommate came back uh, and uh, they jump scared. And the Colombian was like, puta madre, you know, because I was standing in the kitchen and I heard uh, key noises and I just stood there and waited them to come in so I scared them and then he's like man you scared me and I jokingly said why are you always coming back home because it's so weird because within one night they could like constantly go out and back and out and back and out and back for some fucking reason what the fuck are you doing outside but like I was half joking about it and the boyfriend character the boyfriend person took it maybe a little personally and he's like I mean, what's wrong with it? I mean, you do you do the same thing. I mean, you go out and hang out. This is America, dude. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm kidding. So, bro, whatever, you know. To them, I'm just a random, weird, quiet kid. If they know, like, 5% of the lore I've been through, well, fuck all y'all. But in all seriousness, I do really, really, really want to date Leslie. Even though she's, like scary and then at the very end of today it was night time and so lolly told me to help out liana's like you seem too relaxed and yeah i was taking photos bts while liana was blowing bubbles and so lolly was like can you do bts stuff later you know bts stuff you can save for later could you help out right now and uh jonathan also got a little mad but totally understandable um, and then at the very end, Jonathan talked about, like, it's gossip time. And Jonathan talked about Gustavo and Leslie beefing and how Leslie 
screamed at Gustavo on day three and yelling at Gustavo saying that he has terrible work ethic, which is wild. Gustavo is such a nice guy and he's so focused and passionate at what he's doing. And it's just, again, it's just crazy that right now I have the power to make Leslie feel awkward and nervous. I can actually do that. And I really like her still, and I really want to date her, but I got to just play with her feelings a little more, just the same way she played with mine. Um, but, you know, I really do, do really extremely hope that in the following weeks, you know, before the semester truly ends, I would, you know, really have a good time with her um, in class or outside of class or whatever at CMD. Just like where she actually like where we actually treat each other a little bit more intimately, you know. Um, but yeah, and then hopefully we do something together in the summer. Um, but maybe also not. Maybe tomorrow everything will change again and maybe I'll think she hates me again. You never fucking know. And she'll never fucking know as well. Because in her perspective right now, I probably like my personality changes every day. All right, so time now is uh, 6.34, um, 6.34 a.m. on June 4th. It's day eight. It's uh, the quote-unquote final day. Oh, my God. Uh, we've made it, guys. We've made it uh, to day eight. I slept from 2 a.m. to... 6 a.m. 6 10 a.m. Um Yeah, four hours sleep. I really wish I could go to bed earlier, but um at last um I did not. Uh so four hours. So two hours sleep, three hours sleep, four hours sleep. Uh, it's kinda fucked up. I'm really tired. Um, and it sucks even harder that I can't sleep in for tomorrow because tomorrow I have to go to photo one to return the camera because, um, everyone has to. And then on Tuesday, I'll probably have to wake up to go to photo two as well. Um, unless I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, either way, uh, I hope I survive today and then I'm done. Like, And then I'm truly done with the short film. And one of the biggest, most, Im most important things of my life here uh, is basically over. So, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to be late today because uh, I checked the transit app and um yeah oh, i i either go right now or i go half an hour later because i love los angeles traffic of course um but uh yeah i don't have much to say um I really want to know if it's legit or not. Like, Leslie wants to speak to me. Um, I want to know how true that is. And just because she wants to speak to me doesn't mean she'll date me. She'll fall in love with me. I think she'll date me, but she won't fall in love with me. But I think that's great enough. I feel like if I get a haircut and if I'm more awake, I could charm Leslie even more, you know? I could charm her even more if I'm more awake, if I've had a haircut and I'm shaved and I look a little better, I feel like I can charm her a little better, you know, like this is just not it. I look like terrible. I look so terrible uh, right now, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. <sighs> There's like no one here. <sighs> Thank you.
No, they're still there. Bro, they're really leaving me alone like that. All alone in Mar Vista. Fucking Sony Venice. Ari Signature Zoom. <laughs> Wait, where is Ethan? I'm at now. What the like, hell? They went to his car and I heard that they were going to scammer. Did you want to check anything out, Enoch? Or do you we were just making guesses. And honestly, since then I hadn't thought about it until you brought it up like, what at the... Oh, uh, it didn't upload the videos, but I thought it did. So I just deleted everything. Because there was no fucking Wi-Fi. Yeah, there's no Wi-Fi. And they're Let's go. All right, it's 10.38. Leaving this campus. Leaving Wesley alone. Didn't say a word to her today. And I won't come back until maybe a whole month later. Good day. All right, time now is 1.36 uh, a.m. in the morning. I'm extremely tired. Let's wrap this up. Holy fucking shit, finally, day eight is over, ends and means is over, film 33 is officially completely over. And uh, a major chapter in my life also just this ended. And I have a lot to talk about regarding what happened today, but essentially I am also extremely tired today. I arrived at CMD and I was like late and I also don't know what to do because apparently uh, the PAs and everyone else will go to CMD at 8 a.m. and just stay there the whole time to build the flats and just set up stuff. Meanwhile, a skeleton crew of about seven people, including uh, Benny, uh, Leslie, Tyler, Ethan S, um, NJ, uh, freaking, uh, I forgot, uh, freaking Carly, of course, uh, Salali, and then the two professors, uh, Indian professor and Cuchillo, uh, will be there. I think Alex was there. No, Alex wasn't there. Alex, the Brazilian guy, wasn't there. And then that's pretty much it. We'll go to farmer's market and arrive at 7 a.m. Now, I woke up at 6.10, and I was, at 6.40, I was ready to go. But of course, public transportation system, blah, Los Angeles, amazing. I had to wait almost half an hour for a bus to come. And I'm like, you know what, screw it. It's fine if I'm a little late. It's the last day anyways, and I am, I'm not like needed. Anyways, I'm only the BTS. So I arrived at CMD and there's literally no one there because all the people who are supposed to arrive at eight hasn't shown up yet. And all the people who are at farmer's market are probably at farmer's market. I arrived at CMD at around 7.30 and then I, or around 7, like 7.10ish. And then I took a lift for free to Farmer's Market at around uh, 7.30 and I arrived and I immediately found where they are. It's just fucking crazy how I've come to a point in my life in LA where I could randomly take a lift to some random nowhere and find a bunch of people and just randomly walk in and join in. And yeah, the situation was uh, dour. Uh, it rained a little bit, and uh, because of the skeleton crew, it's also really, like, quiet and not as eventful and positive. Leslie's there, and um, I did some BTS stuff, and I was extremely tired, and I look serious as shit most of the time today because I'm tired, and when I'm tired, I look serious and pissed. Um, and, uh, at some point, Kuchio wanted me to do BTS stuff instead of chatting. Um, 
and told Benny to tell me. I could immediately tell that it's Kuchio's request. Uh, so yeah, that happened. And uh, yeah, farmer's market scene was really easy to film. It's just one shot anyways. Um, no lighting required. And uh, after that, Kuchio straight up left. And then I was going to take, uh, I was going to be in NJ's car and NJ will drive me to CMD. And uh, after guarding Benny's truck. So Drew didn't drive a truck here um, because come on, it's a farmer's market. So a lot of the important equipment are all in Benny's truck, the Sony Venice, the RE uh, 60 to 300 millimeter signature zoom, uh, <coughs> and all these uh, apple boxes and uh, sandbags and whatever. Um, so that's that. And uh, after guarding Benny's truck a little bit, I and NJ had a little extra time to just go around farmer's market and buy something to eat so nj found some french pastries and bought it and there's also a boba place that's opened by a taiwanese person even though uh it was tended by like a white guy and another person who's clearly not taiwanese um but i got myself a classic milk tea boba for six bucks and it's all right it's not that great or anything uh but i'm happy that i'm able to drink something like that in the freaking morning <laughs> And uh, at some point, uh, the Indian professor and Leslie and Ethan S. came back. And uh, Ethan S. was holding a pot of plant. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, oh, it's a pot of basil. And it's for the Indian professor. And it was so funny. Apparently, they also want to get something to eat. Uh, <coughs> anyways, uh, Tyler joined us a little bit later. And uh, uh we walked towards Tyler's car and NJ's car and Tyler talked about some pretty interesting shit. So Tyler talked about how last night he it, it went really, really late and uh, he's closer to his girlfriend's place than his own place. So he asked his girlfriend if he could crash at her place and she's like, sure. So Tyler went to her place and took a shower and everything. And he said, okay, you know, tonight let's not do the thing let's not fuck and they fucked uh and uh, tyler was like oh yeah you know she kept me awake you know we did some fun stuff um and uh, it's uh, flashback to the time natalie told me about the blowjob incident that really fucked me up at this point in the u.s though i really like a we're adults now b it's america and I am not surprised by anything now. I'm like, okay, congrats, I guess. I'm single. I'm a virgin. I'm a loser. What do you expect my reaction to be? And in fact, I'm a little impressed. Like, how do you even have the energy to have sex in the middle of such a lethal shoot? Like, yesterday, I wanted to, like, just sleep. I would just lay down and sleep. Even uh, if, if a girl is waiting for me on a bed, I would just say, hey man, let's not do this, okay? I gotta fucking sleep. Let's just, I don't know. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, so there's that. And then Tyler was like, oh, I'm not gonna disclose who, but there's a couple on our set, in our crew, who has sex like every day. And the moment he said this, I could immediately tell, okay, it's fucking Zach and said Lolly. They're having sex every day of the shoot. And that's ridiculous, but judging by the looks of it, it's very true because they're always together. They're always giggling and laughing, sitting on top of each other and being annoying, bossy ass bitches. <coughs> so yeah, that's an information I, uh, I'm glad I know, but also I don't need to know anymore. <laughs> And it's like good for them, but that this is also low key why people like said Lolly aren't my type at all. She's nice and she's touchy, uh, but also like these girls are just too easy, you know. Compared to someone like Leslie, who's extremely difficult to get, like Leslie's like a level one hundred boss. Like she's so difficult to decipher and tame, uh, and I don't want to use the word tame. She's so difficult to to please i don't want to use please either but you, you get the idea uh so that's that okay anyways interesting information both i and nj are single and it was kind of awkward 
I went to his ca her car, and I'm glad she really drove me, and she's really nice, but damn, her car stinks. It stinks. It smells like a old, dried-up pencil, pencil, old, dried-up pencil case. It's It really stinks, uh, and also it has, like, these weird, crumbly dead leaves on the car. It's, like, it's either dead leaves or breadcrumbs, I don't know, but... We drove to CMD, I had like boba in my hands, and a camera bag, and this is it. At around 9 something a.m., we arrived at CMD, and uh, we're ready for the quote-unquote last shot of the, of the short film, the last scene that we have to film. Of course, aside from the rural Mexico flashback, which I do not like to think about, um, but uh, yeah, we arrived, and... Uh, People are still trying to unload the truck. The truck isn't even opened yet. And uh, I just walked to set. And for some reason, even though we haven't finished, we haven't wrapped, at that point, it already feels like we've wrapped it. Because it feels like we went a full circle. And now we're back at home base. And there's a nostalgic feeling, but also a feeling of melancholy. Like, oh, we're back now. This is it. And... Uh, yeah, I was a lot more chill. I don't want to help move stuff, even though I moved a, a few stuff, a few items. Uh, at the end, I just really didn't want to move stuff. I just stood around, walked around. Um, and I didn't even want to take pictures of BTS. So, um, again, met up with Benny again and spoke with Benny a little bit on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, apparently last night on the car, so Ariel and Benny drove off. Benny drove Ariel home yesterday. And in the car, in the truck, Ariel asked Benny out, which is really silly because Benny, while he acts very charismatic, I, I don't know. I just don't see how it is. But apparently, according to Benny, Ariel asked him out and congratulations, I guess. Again, and, and again, it's like throwback to secondary school if one of my closest friends uh, suddenly get a uh, girlfriend. And Benny's not that close a friend, by the way, but, like, th that would suck. But at this point, I don't really care anymore. A, I don't really care anymore. B, we're adults. C, I'm also in a similar situation. Like, I know I can't call Leslie my girlfriend or anything, but I asked Leslie out. She said yes. I'm really fucking into her. She's low-key into me, I guess. Hopefully. Um... So, in a way, I and Leslie are in a similar situation, just in a much more dramatic, cinematic uh, way, I guess. Um, so, uh, yeah, good good on them. And apparently, uh, tonight, Benny and Ariel are going to watch a Baroque concert together, like a Baroque music concert, like some very lame, nerdy shit. I don't know, uh, but something like that. And at another point, Zach showed Benny something really secretive that even I cannot see uh, but Birkin told me about it later and that is uh, apparently uh, our previous catering surface um, tried to sue us the college because you know we got this catering service it sucked ass we got food poisoning from it and now we canceled the subscription and they're trying to sue us or something and Birkin's not going to tell Cuchillo I guess and uh, Birkin said he's going to respond with a little intimidation. You know, classic Turkish mafia shit. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I tried to secretly film it. And then Birkin's like, I'm serious, delete it. And I know I should have deleted it. And he's like, look me in the eye and promise me, delete it. And I hate lying. Um, but I told him, oh, it's gone, it's gone. Uh, but it's not fucking gone, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to keep the video. Um, anyways, to the film set we go, and, uh, they set up this crazy 360 dolly shot, uh, confession booth, which looks really good, but also really extra for a, sh for a scene this simple. Like, if I was the director, I wouldn't make it this excessive and extra. And, seriously, from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m., they did one, the same setup, the same shot. They kept on doing it again and again and again and again. I feel so bad for Nick. Nick is the biggest MVP of the day. They overworked his ass. He was nearly dead by the end of today's shoot. Nick the dolly grip. Holy shit. 
Um, so that was absolutely insane. And uh, for a good chunk, I... Uh, <laughs> Michelle's bugging me now. Hold on. Um, anyways. <sighs> I'm so fucking tired. For a good chunk of time, I don't even want to be on set. The set is smoky. Uh, there's a lot of haze and it's hot as hell. And everyone's dead in the inside. So I don't want to be in there. So instead, I spent a good chunk of time uh, upstairs in this sitting area with Brie and Tova, the BTS team, who are clearly not doing anything. Just chatting, gossiping, whatever. And uh, given that this is basically like the final moments of Film 33, I might as well spill my personal shit and ruin my own image and I don't care anymore. At some point, Brie asked us uh, to uh, give opinion on like a song lyric she wrote about Oh, I'm left to, uh, I'm left alone in this world to dance in this, uh, confusion or something like that, which is pretty cool. And I'm like, oh, wait until you hear my poems. So I whipped out the, the poem I wrote, uh, uh after the breathless, uh, script writing incident with Leslie. Oh Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Uh, anoint my head with uh, anoint me with molten steel and cradle my severed head like a babe in your arms and treasure my arms and legs and bathe my organs I feel like a child in your presence running around in circles or something, something like that and both Tova and Brie are really impressed at how gruesome and like uh, and like cinematic it is um and I'm happy they enjoyed it. And then I, I showed them my love poem. Uh, Strangle me to death with your sweaty hands. Um, and I that's only the first line. And like the next few lines are even crazier. Like, if you don't love me, please kill me slowly. Uh, stick me to a wall with gaff tape and stab me with a C-stand. And Bree's like, ooh, it's getting a little sexual. Ooh. And, and then Bree's like, is that to Leslie? And I'm happy that both Bree and Tova now also know that I and Leslie have a thing. Um, and Bree's like, is that to Leslie? And I didn't answer that. Um, but they were both really impressed with my poem. And Tova's was like, what? Damn, I wish I could write like that. Like, you're so poetic and dramatic. And then I even showed off like my personal statement uh, for USC about like how I'm invisible, how people couldn't see or hear or smell me. And like, and like, I felt like there's a glass wall between me and everyone else. And no matter how much I scream and talk, people couldn't hear me. And Tova's like, wow, like, that's so like, uh, poetic. Um, and Brie was like, pretty, like, and both I and Brie also agree that English is more poetic for us. Like, for some reason, we can't express as poetically in our native tongue. And that's, and Brie said it's probably because we emotionally matured in English. And that's very much true. Like, around... 17 18 19 i speak english more so than cantonese and i was able to emotionally um express myself in english way better um so that's pretty interesting and tova showed me uh, some of the stuff she writes and it's all right uh some of her story ideas are pretty interesting like some period comedy dark comedy about a 18th century uh brazilian pirate um, there's also this high school story, which is eh, um, and, uh, his, her writing style is like an article, like, why does this happen? Why does that happen? And it's not as, like, flashy and artsy as, as my writing, so that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, and then I talked about personal shit a little more. Brie, even though Brie has a boyfriend herself, the sound guy flirted with her, and she low-key liked him, uh, on set. And her boyfriend also knows that. And Brie even showed the DMs between her and the sound guy. Um, and then I'm like, oh, you want to see my text with Leslie? And both of them got really curious because Leslie seems like a such a robotic, inhuman. Uh, and they just can't grasp the idea that some marshmallow guy like me uh, would be able to text Leslie. And let alone argue with her. Um, but Tova also said, man, like, Enoch, you're like... You got layers, yeah. So that's a really like cool moment because like people back in secondary school wouldn't think that of me, but now I properly present myself. Um, it's just ooh, ooh, this guy, this guy got layers, you know. 
Um, uh, it, it continues. For two, three times, I go back to the soundstage to take a look at their progress. And yet, they're still stuck doing the same goddamn shot. Uh, so, that's that. Uh, at some point, me, at some point, Eric joins. Or Eric got really pissed at some point because Birkin tried to fix something that he did. And uh, Eric's really pissed. So, also, Eric got invited to do a feature film uh, called Solidarity. A feature film version of the first short film of my college program. And uh, Eric, Ariel, and Skylar were recommended by Kuchio. So Eric's already like, he's already in Kuchio's really, really good side. But anyways, um, Eric and us three joined and we were at the, uh, we were at the uh, friggin' um, cafeteria. Oh yeah, there's lunchtime a little early at around 2 p.m. Um, I wanted to have lunch with Leslie as expected, but uh, that never happened. Leslie had lunch with Drew. And I had lunch with, like, I was in the popular kids' table with Ariel and Brie and Tova, and Eric was there, and it was fun. And the Indian professor was next table, and I talked with the Indian professor a little bit. I said, you know, can I crash your Film 41? And the Indian professor was like, oh, Film 41 is like the mil is like military style. It's going to be a lot of uh, hands-on stuff. And I guess the Indian professor said this to me because he expects me to be scared by that stuff like he thinks i'm lazy or something maybe i'm overthinking but you know what i'll do it i'll fucking do it if i can handle film 33 41 I w i'm not saying it's a cakewalk and also again i'm not a cinematography guy i love cinematography i love camera shit but i'm not tip top you know but i'll still fucking do it because i love learning so um that's that and then uh yeah, at some point, you know, I and Cliff laughed at a meme of Drew that I made. A photo of Drew that I took. And then Cliff showed it to Leslie. And I saw that Cliff is showing it to Leslie. And I looked at Leslie. I looked at her and I smiled. And Leslie saw me. And I know she sees me. I make sure that she sees me. And I turn back and I ignore her for the rest of the day. So today throughout the whole day, I ignored Leslie. I didn't say a single goddamn word to her. And, uh, yeah. Um, I'll talk more about that later. So, uh, we at some point wrapped. Finally, at around 8.30, 8.45pm, uh, we finally wrapped. And at that point, like, half the class completely gone. So today, Theo, Gustavo didn't even show up. And multiple people didn't show up. Trinity Gang, of course not. Jared, Amy, Thomas, Orson, long gone. Uh, Shane dipped at some point. Alex... The Ukrainian guy dipped at some point. All the PAs, none of them showed up. Apparently yesterday was their last day. They were told that yesterday was their last day. Um, Ethan S. is gone as well. As far as PAs go, only Cliff and Ariel remain. And also Alex, the Brazilian guy. Um, and also Jordan. Uh, and uh, Ariel's coming up with a crazy game plan for her Film 33. Um... She's for sure going for director, and honestly, I personally think she has like a 95% chance of getting director. And uh, she is hoping that Jordan would get producer, but the thing is, Betsy will get it. I know for sure Betsy will get it, which is going to be a huge issue, going to be a huge conflict between Ariel and Betsy, which is very exciting, and I want to watch it. Um, and then, uh, anyways, uh, we finally wrapped. And it was a huge moment, but at that point, like, half the class is already gone. And we helped break down the set really, really slowly because we're all dead inside. We're all really tired. And uh, I helped if, as much as I don't want to. I somehow had to because otherwise I would have survivor's guilt. Um, and apparently Jonathan ranted towards Carly. And um, it was really messed up. And even people, like... Tyler and Skyler also think that Jonathan shouldn't have done it, but I totally understand Jonathan. This shoot is a shit show, and uh, I would understand why. But Carly's the wrong person. Carly's a puppet. Cuchillo is the one who's doing this. Like when I and Tova and Brie gossiped a lot about Film 33, and I started reflecting, like, what are the best moments of Film 33, and like, 
hierarchy and how it started and my first reaction to Tova, my first reaction to Bree and like, it's funny how like at that point we haven't wrapped, but I'm already treating it like it's the after party. Like, you know, I'm already having like self-reflection and stuff. Anyways, uh, again, we wrapped, we took down the set and everything and whatever. And, uh, you know, saw Leslie doing her own thing, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, uh, a lot of people left at the end it's just a core group at the end it's just Birkin, liana zach said lolly um uh skylar cliff a ariel leslie i think that's it and uh also nick and dominic and i helped load in the truck and everything and uh yeah it's impressive that i end up staying this late and uh i'm really fucking tired uh but i also want to help out um and uh yeah at the end i helped out as much as i could um and i had to leave i don't have a car the last bus number one is coming i gotta go home i'm super hungry i haven't had dinner it's like 10 something p.m so i just left i walked i walked away and i realized oh my god it's i have to wait like 16 more minutes until the bus arrives so i walked back to cmd um to look at cliff and leslie one last time so here's the sad news apparently we won't have a final class i thought that after this on thursday i'll go back to cmd one last time and have like a goodbye you know but that got canceled because of some reason i don't know um so this is it this is actually it it's it's almost like the pandemic times again, like in 2020 when the classes just ended prematurely. This is it. I'll never see Trinity Gang again, probably, unless they show up at the after party, at the rap party or something. But like, this is it. Wow. So after this, I probably don't have to ever come back to CMD again until next semester. I couldn't believe it. And I felt really sad. And at some point, I kind of wanted to cry. So before I leave, I wanted to see Leslie and hear her voice one last time, so I went back. And that's when Tyler talked about the Jonathan Rand thing, and Leslie was like, you know, maybe he should just go fuck himself. And at some point, Leslie, like, zoned out. That was a little earlier. At some point, Leslie zoned out, and she sort of looked in my general direction. And I really wanted to approach her and talk to her and play with her hair. I can't. And she... I think she wants to speak to me. I don't know how truthful Benny is, but if both Benny and Ariel also believe that Leslie has some feelings towards me right now, I think it's sort of true. I know Leslie wants to speak to me. And even by the way she acts yesterday, but she walked up to Ariel and was like, some people think I'm purely lesbian, but I'm not, and hugged Ariel and walked away. That wasn't directed to Ariel. That was directed to me. Um, because she probably thought, I think she's purely lesbian. That's not true. Um, but I just couldn't walk up to Leslie and do that. Because if I do it, I lose the game. I'm the beggar. I want Leslie to come up to me to do it. Also, my original plan is to fucking ignore Leslie for at least a whole week after the shoot. Because I need a fucking break from her. Because she's so frustrating of a person to speak to. Because she treats me like shit. So she has it coming. If she wants to speak to me and I ignore her and I hurt her feelings, good. Because I want her feelings to get hurt. I want her to learn from this. I want her to know how I feel. But also, it's going to be a while since I see her again. I really miss her. I really want to talk to her. But I have to really hold it in. So at the end, I had nothing to say. I just left. It was kind of sad. And I'm sure she feels this way. I hope she feels this way. Um, it's so cool to, in a way, like, Betty and Ariel are into each other. They start dating. Boom. Happened within one week. Zach and Lolly, fucking every day. But then I and Leslie, we're like, we're still like just two months, all three months since I had a crush on her. And we're playing mind games with each other. Like, we still can't walk up to each other and say things. I confessed to her. She fucked it up by ignoring me and treating me like shit continuously. So I start ignoring her and now she feels bad about it. I also feel bad about it. Both of us are hurting, no idea. 
I made a couple of Instagram stories, both of which are very ominous, but I had to do it. And a bunch of people started like DMing me, asking me if I'm okay. Like Justin asked me if I'm okay. Uh, an old friend uh, in secondary school, Chapman, asked me if I'm okay. And Crystal asked me if I'm okay. And um, I told Crystal, oh, I just survived film 33. And I said, oh, I'm, sh I'm sure Leslie will tell you that. And, and Crystal was like, oh yeah, in fact, Leslie's coming to me right now. So it's kind of crazy at the very end of the class today, there were so few people left, but the soundstage was still a mess and there's still all these Keslo boxes. Um, it's kind of an issue because tomorrow at 8 a.m. they have to return all the cameras and lenses to Keslo and no one's helping out. So uh, they have to do it literally tonight. That's why I wanted to help out and stay behind. Um, so everyone's suffering and Leslie had to wake up at 7 a.m. tomorrow. She had nothing to eat. So I'm so glad that there's someone like Crystal, who's like a mom, who could treat Leslie to some food and to some sleep, to some shelter. Um, as much as I would love to, you know, help her and, you know, whatever, but, uh, whatever. Um, also, Drew is a really sad person. So I forgot if I've mentioned this yesterday, but... but yesterday but Anna told me that Drew goes to Cambodia like once a year mysteriously maybe Drew has a secret wife or a secret children in like Cambodia or Vietnam or something and the more I learn about Drew the sadder he gets like when I and Drew and Birkin went to Smart and Final Drew was just wandering around like a loner and today apparently after lunch Drew walked to the bathroom and said I need 10 minutes of peace and then apparently he went to the bathroom for like 20 minutes and went out and acted like nothing happened. And then at the very end of today, Cliff asked Drew, uh, Drew was like staring into the air and doing nothing. And Cliff asked Drew, um, has sh the short film shoots always been like this? And Drew took five seconds. And he's like, yes. So Drew's like a really sad person. Like, and he's only served 10 years. He has 10 more years to serve in the Navy. Uh, so, pretty interesting character, actually. And now Drew and Leslie's relationship is, like, even more interesting. Drew is, like, Leslie's godfather, in a way. A father figure. Very Koreeda-esque. I could write a whole movie about them. Um, but, yeah, again, you know, my relationship with Leslie, you know. Yeah, at the end, there's really not a lot to say. Um, I really, it fucking sucks that I have to wake up a little early tomorrow to go to Photo 1 just to return the fucking camera. Um, but otherwise, I was just completely sleeping. Um, but I can't do that, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I really don't. I really felt sad that I couldn't go up to Leslie and be all flirty with her. One good thing is, though, is at least I got some clout from all this Leslie drama because Benny knows, and because Bree and Tova sort of know, and and Ariel also knows. Now I have some like. Ooh, so this Enoch has game, you know. So at least I got some clout from all this. That's one good thing. <laughs> but it just sucks that I can't just go up to Leslie and just be nice to her and talk to her and chat with her. I don't know why, but it has to be all these mind games. I don't want to play mind games with her. I just want to be straight up and be happy with her. But it's just not possible. Um, but at least I think she likes me back at least a little bit. And I, I really hope that by keeping a distance from her in the next week or so, I hope she would like me more. So there's that.